Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Mr. Fleischman. I am so sorry I couldn't be there with you guys today. I have a sick kid. I'm home right now with her, probably watching uh, cartoons on the couch. Um, so I wanted to give you guys uh, a kind of a lesson from home. It's it's uh, it's Tuesday night for me, and I'm kind of going to try to give you guys a lesson that you can watch in class this morning. So um, here's your warm-up. But first, before we read the warm-up, can we go over our Pixel class that we, we uh, created the other day? Let's take a look. So the other day we made a class called pixel and we had three properties. It's red value, it's green value, and it's blue value. And we kind of talked about how we want these to be private, uh, primarily because we don't want people to have full control over changing the value of red, green, and blue to illegal values. Um, it's good class practice. We're going to learn more about this in the future to make properties and fields like this private um, as part of our, our object management in Java. Okay, so we talked about this idea of the getter, right? As a consequence of kind of um, controlling these by making them private, um, the only way that we can allow users or other parts of our programs, other classes to access these properties is by using these getter methods. The book calls them accessors, right? But I'm gonna call them getters. I think that's kind of the terminology that most programmers use. Um, and simply they return the property that you see up here. And if you kind of highlight these, you can kind of see uh, what Eclipse thinks that we're talking about, and it's uh, it kind of links to the property field up here. Okay, so this is going to come back later. This whole clicking on things and seeing what it thinks the initial um, declaration was, right? So let's let's kind of remember that. We also have some setters, and one of the cool thing about the setters is that um, we can control like the, if somebody wants to change the value of the red um, and pass in a value as a parameter we can kind of control that it stays between zero and 255, which we learned are the min and max values of a red, green, and a blue value within a pixel. So if someone passes in an, a value that's too high, we can simply max out to 255, uh, too low, we can zero it out. Otherwise, we can let them set that value, okay? So you can kind of see um, in here, um, these values, the initial declaration is up here uh, in kind of that beige orange color, okay? so. As a, as a primary warm-up, why don't you guys go ahead and um, implement, without looking, why don't you see if you can implement set green and set blue real quick. It's going to look very similar. What I want you to do is probably try not to look at this code or uh, the code uh, on your screen or on my screen. See if you can remember how to make a setter like uh, off the top of your head without copy-pasting. Okay, So see if you can do that. Um, so pause the video and make uh, set green and set blue, and it's gonna be very, very similar, if not exactly the same. I know you could copy paste, but why don't you go ahead and do it from the top of your head as good practice. After that, we'll get to our, our warm up proper, okay? Pause the video in three, two, one. Okay, so we're back now. Hopefully, uh, you have made your set blue and set green values. And they're going to be in here for you guys to use later. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting for us to to kind of play with these pixels later. Okay, so let's take a look. That was a pre warm up. Let's look at the real proper warm up here. Okay, so let's make a brand new class called Seahawk. Okay, it should have the properties name and jersey number. Okay, so the name will be a string, and the jersey number will be uh, an int. Okay, now it's going to be just fine. Uh, let's make these private, right? And as a as a uh, consequence, we're going to need to make some getters and setters. We'll see that in number three. The Seahawk class should also have a constructor that takes two parameters, which will assign the values to the properties above, okay? So that's going to be a good piece of practice to make a constructor. We didn't have a constructor for pixel. So see if you can remember how to make a constructor. And third, let's make some getters and setters for each property. So we're going to have get name, uh, get jersey number, set name, and set jersey number. And why don't we go ahead and do this? I'm going to add something to this. Let's make sure. So make sure the jersey number falls between and including 1 and 99. You never see a football player out there with a number 100 jersey nor a zero jersey, but you do see the rest of them, okay? So we're going to be learning some new things about objects using this class. But first, we're going to program them together in our pixel class 
to learn new skills that you can apply it to this player, the Seahawk class is what I should have said. The Seahawks class, okay? So why don't you guys go after and do that? Create your Seahawk class with all of these requirements. And in a few minutes, you guys can unpause the video and I will build out a Seahawk class that we can all kind of agree on, okay? And you can kind of check your work against mine, okay? So let's pause the video in three, in two, and one, and pause. Okay, so we're back, let's go ahead. I'm going to make a new class right here. And I'm gonna do this nice and quick since you guys are already done. So I'm gonna make a class called Seahawk. And I don't want a main method. So I promised that it would have a private string called name, a private int called jersey number. Now here's the thing, there's gonna be a lot more. If we wanted to really make a Seahawk, there would be a lot more than this, but I don't wanna kind of get bogged down in making all these things and kind of imagining them. Uh, I also said it needed a constructor, so we need to make sure that uh, to make a constructor, all you do is you say public because uh, another class needs to be able to instantiate a Seahawk, okay? And here's what we're gonna do. Um, this is the last time we're gonna do it this way, by the way. So check this out. I'm gonna say string name choice. And then I'm gonna say int jersey number choice. Okay, so the word, I use choice because remember I told you guys that I didn't want these to have the same name as these because then we might get some confusion about like which one we're talking about and we're finally gonna tackle that challenge today, okay? So the this is the last time we're gonna use this name choice and jersey number choice. We're gonna do it another way, a way that most programmers that write in Java do. Um, so we're, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So we'd like to set the name field to whatever the name choice that was passed in. The jersey number I want to set to jersey number choice. Okay. So you can kind of see there's a color coding kind of hinting at what's what, right? So if I click on jersey number and hover over it, you notice in that beige color that the initial declaration is way up there. It's the class scope, right? The jersey number choice, if I hover over it, it says the initial declaration is right here in the parameter list, okay? So remember that, we're gonna fix this later. Um, and we're gonna remember this trick about what variable's what by clicking and highlighting. Next, uh, we needed a get name. So I'm gonna say getters. Okay, so if you think about what the get name, so it's gonna be public, and we wanna return a string for get name. So the return type is get name. We don't need any parameters. We know all we need to know about what we want without a parameter. Okay, so we're gonna return name. And let's just make sure it's talking about the right one. I'll cut, double click it. Okay, very good. And it says the initial declaration is up here. And it, again, it is set, it is assigned right here. Okay, so this is good. So for the getters, we also need a public. I'm gonna go a little, a little higher here. A public int, which is gonna be get jersey number. Now I don't want you guys to uh, get too confused about the names of these methods. The convention is you simply say get and then the name of the property following proper camel casing uh, rules and conventions, right? So we don't get creative with your getters and setter names. That's unconventional, right? You don't say like grab name or give me the name, you know, just say get, right? It's what everybody else does. And we kind of want to be speaking the same language as programmers. Return jersey number. All right, I'm happy. These are your getters. Not too much to say about them. The thing about getters is they have return types, right? Since we're, we're coming back with something, you gotta make sure they don't say void because we're, we're bringing back a value. We need to kind of specify what data type we're talking about. Okay, next, uh, the setters. Now these ones, on the other hand, are void, right? So make sure you have public, public void set name, okay? Now I'm gonna let you guys kind of decide right here. String, for example, new name, okay? And then we can set name to new name. You, you may not have said new name, um, but you can kind of say uh, name choice or whatever you want here. Um, but we do make this void because really all it's doing is changing the state of a property in here and we're not returning something back to the client code. It's just kind of changing the state of the object, right? So these are void. And remember, it's not public static void. See if you can kind of complete my sentence. I've kind of said this ad nauseum. 
it's not public static void because we're changing the property of one particular player's or one particular Seahawk's name. It cannot be static if we're talking about an instance property, right? Static is something that all, all Seahawks would share, okay? It's not static, all right? Uh, let's talk about uh, the next one, public void set jersey number. And then I would take an int a new number. And there was a little bit of um, there was a little bit of limitation on this, right? So if I I'm just going to limit this, okay? So if okay, there's a lot of different ways to do this. If the new number is too big, for example, right? Whoa, boy, whoa there, whoa there. If the new number is greater than 99, I guess I'm just going to say set set the number jersey number, right? I'll just go ahead and set it to, to 99. Else if. Now we should be using else if here, and if you're using th um, chained if statements, probably not, you're not probably understanding the efficiency of the else if, and we'll talk about that maybe in a second. If the new number is less than zero, or less than one, I guess, then I'll go ahead and set the number, jersey number, to set it to one, else I can allow someone to set the uh, the jersey number can just be the new number. Okay, if you're not breaking the rules on on the size of the number, then you can go ahead and be new number. Okay. Very good. Okay, so those that's what I asked for in the warm-up. Okay, so we're finally gonna get to something now, um, and I'm gonna focus on this, okay? This area uh, that I've, it's been bothering me for a little while. Uh, we've been using stuff like name choice and jersey number choice to kind of uh, separate the idea that it's not the same as this name and it's not the same as this jersey number. This is great, this works, and you know what? If you're gonna become your own kind of programmer and everything, you should you know keep this convention if you like it. The thing is, not a whole lot of programmers and the AP in particular, exams and everything like that, are gonna use a different convention. And I'm gonna teach you about it through the Pixel class, okay? So let's everybody go over to your Pixel class. You'll notice, remember, we don't have a constructor. So this, uh, this class doesn't have a constructor. Let's make one real quick. And we're gonna make one in a new way. Okay, you ready for this? So it's definitely public, okay? Public pixel, okay? And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pass in these three values and notice what I'm calling them. Notice they're the same exact names as the property fields, okay? Now, if I click this, check this out. It doesn't highlight up here, right? Remember we did this earlier. If I click on this earlier, like if I click on this red, check it out. It goes, hey, you're talking about that field red, aren't you, right? But if I click on this one, it knows that it's not the same. Look, it's a different declaration. I don't know if you guys knew that we could do this. You might be kind of confused and looking at this and say, hey, hey, wait a minute. The scope of this int, right? The scope of this int is class-wide, right? In fact, you can kind of see that because down here in this getter, we use red. So the scope is is class-wide. It's kind of global in that sense. How in the world is it like, how in the world is it like not having a problem with the fact that we're calling it a new int called red? It's exactly the same name. Now, here's the thing. This is called scope masking, okay? So I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to make some notes here. So the scope, I'm going to say this, the scope of this red in here, of the red, the parameter red, masks the field red, right? So what I mean by that, and it's kind of like, kind of vocab -y. Uh, I don't know why I have this highlighting thing going on. I'm kind of worried my computer's starting to kind of growl. I hope this all works out. <laughs> okay, so the scope, the scope, what is this? Wow, the scope of the parameter, sorry guys. The scope of the parameter masks uh, the field, okay? So when I'm talking about red in here, now check this out, I'm gonna type it, right? Well, let's actually do this real quick. I can't, let's say if I say red equals red, right? This is not how we're gonna do this. Now check it out, right? So if I click over this, it says, oh, you must be talking about this parameter one, right? And this red over here, you also must be talking about this parameter. The This is a more immediate scope, and Java, the compiler, will think that you want the one that's the most immediate scope. So this scope is 
is masking the one out here. Do you see what I mean? This parameter scope seems to be more important and more upfront in uh, the, the compiler's mind, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. To differentiate between the two, we're gonna say this, okay, ready? Literally, we're gonna say this dot red equals red. Okay, check this out. This is the this word is glowing purple. Okay? Now what do we mean by this? Okay? So this is this is what I mean. Okay. So I'm gonna say this. So we use this dot notation to say we are talking about. an instance property or instance field, okay? Without this dot notation, the compiler will first look for the most immediate scope. Now see if I can uh, make sense of this. I know this might seem a little bit bizarre, right? So let's look at this. So when I say this dot, what I'm talking about is this instance of pixel, okay? So when I say this dot red, I'm talking about this instance of pixels red property, right? So when I hover over this, right? And I say this dot red, what do you think I'm talking about, uh, compiler? It goes, oh, you know what? You must be talking about the field red because you said this dot, meaning this instance of pixel. Now this instance of pixel is kind of like this whole class, right? You know, it's represented by this whole class. So when you say this dot red, you must be talking about this one, right? This instance. Now the little red is the little scope red. Do you guys see that? Okay, I might be belaboring the point here, but when you want to talk about the instance property or the, you know, the pixels red value, you say this dot red. If you don't use this dot, the first thing the compiler will do is look, is there anything immediate in scope, like a parameter or some other variable in here that could be read, right? If so, then it'll use that one. If not, check it out, like down here, if there is no other immediate scope, then it'll say, well, you must be talking about the instance property, right? So that's kind of how the compiler thinks, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set the rest of these properties using that notation, this dot green equals green and this dot blue equals blue. Okay, remember that, okay? So this dot means we're talking about, I'm gonna say this, we use this dot notation to say we are talking about an instance property. Without this notation, first the compiler, meaning I guess Java, right? I call it Java sometimes. We'll first look for the most immediate scope, right? So for example, can I, can I show you the difference? This red right here, I don't have this dot notation, so the compiler says, is there anything like defined in here and locally? Yes, there is this parameter red, okay? So it's different than the other, the property up here. Uh, this one down here, right? This red, it'll go, okay, so uh, I don't use this dot notation, so is there any immediate like parameter here that's red? No, there's nothing? Okay, then you must be talking about the global red or the, the instance property, right? So there are multiple ways to refer to the property. If you wanna be safe every time, you say this dot. Now, most people will actually do that, especially with these getters, okay? To be super clear, I think it's good practice, and I'll let Sylvain tell you whether or not he agrees, is to say this dot on all of these to make sure that, you're, that your uh, fellow programmers uh, know that you're talking about um, this instance of a pixel's value, green, blue, and red, okay? All right, so why don't we take a minute, right? We're using this dot notation. Um, to set the values of the fields in the constructor. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to go over to the Seahawk class and I want you to fix that so it matches this notation, okay? So pause the video and set these to be name and jersey number, for, remove the word choice, and then we're gonna have to set it using this dot notation, okay? So that's your first task, here we go. So pause the video in three, in two, and one, pause. Okay guys, we're back again. Um, hopefully um, you guys had a nice discussion about that. I, I can kind of tell, um, I'm being a psychic here, I can tell in the future that you guys talked about this and Sylvain had some great things to say. So let's let's just fix this. Hopefully uh, between my explanation and his, uh, it makes sense to you guys, okay? So jersey number. Now the reason I need to teach you guys this is because 
you're going to see it. Other people's code's going to have it. And in fact, the AP's code is going to have it. And you guys need to know, right? You guys need to know what's going on. So we're going to say this dot name gets name. This dot jersey number gets jersey number. All right. Now, I, this is personally a convention that I like and I use as well. So because I kind of learned through the AP format, I think this is kind of, this is a good way. Remember, this dot means the instance of Seahawk, and you can tell without it, the first thing it'll look for is something local like a parameter, and it'll, those are different. This name is different than that name, although we're setting the value of this name to the one that you pass in. That's the purpose of it. Okay. Ready? In? Okay. All right. Now, check this out. Let's actually take a second. Let's make a few pixels. Can we do that? Well, let's save this real quick. Save the pixel class. Now I'm going to go over to my program class. So I have my client code here, and I think it's just like a blank main method. Okay, womp womp, right? So let's go ahead and instantiate a pixel or two. Okay, so I, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say pixel my pixel. It's going to be a new pixel. And I would like its red value to be 20, its green value to be 100, and its blue value to be uh, 300. Oh my goodness, guess what? You know what, I just realized something. I need to give you guys some homework. Not homework, but you know, work right now. Uh, I just realized something. We protected the value of our pixels, right? Uh, when it was setters, right? Using the setters. Can you guys find a way to to protect the value of the pixels at the moment of construction. Does that make sense? So can you make sure that the value of the pixels is okay at the moment of construction, right? So uh, there's nothing in this logic here that's gonna protect the, um, that's gonna protect the, uh, the value of the pixels could be too big at the moment of construction, okay? So why don't we do that real quick, okay? More, more classwork, okay? There's a lot of different ways to do this, all right? So it's, it might look the same. I th I'm gonna show you guys a neat little trick uh, that might work, okay? And hopefully I don't have to like back out of it, okay? So let's make sure we protect the value of the pixels at the beginning, okay? So if someone passes in a blue value that's too big, then it needs to, it needs to be uh, set to, to be lower, okay? Okay, let's do that in three, two, one, and pause the video. All right, let's do that. Okay, we're back. All right. Okay, so what are we gonna do in order to, to fix this, okay? So let's, let's actually take a minute and do it for blue. You know what? Oh, okay, yeah, let's do it. Whatever. I told you guys to do it, so let's do it. It's just so repetitive. Okay, one way we could do it is we could borrow a lot of this logic, right? So here's what we can do, right? So I guess there's a couple of neat ways to do it that you might like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to borrow this logic um, and, and put it before the red, greens, and blues, okay? So right before I call this.red is red, I need to kind of like protect the value of red, right? So if red is greater than 255, I'm going to go ahead and change the value. Else if red is less than zero, then red is whatever, right? So I only need these two, okay? I only need those two. So here's what's going on, okay? So check this out. There's a couple of neat ways to do this. Um, so if the red's too big, go ahead and set it. Now, what red am I talking about? I'm talking about the local parameter. I'm not saying this dot, right? So I must be talking about the parameter passed in. I can reset that value. If it's too big, make it 255. If it's too small, make it zero. Um, and then go ahead and set it to red. Okay, so we can borrow this logic and go ahead and put it before the blue, the green and the blue as well. Okay, and it's just like, it's a little bit kind of boring and repetitive. Um, but you know, sometimes there are actually, I think there are cool, a couple cooler ways to do this that maybe Sylvain can show you guys. Um, but let's go with this way for now because I don't want to get too wacky. All right, some of you guys out there might find a cool way to do this. Now notice I'm just doing the same thing for green and I'm about to do the same thing for blue. Okay. 
If blue is too big, set the blue back down to 255. If the blue is too small, set the blue back down to zero. And now we can set it to blue. So just make sure we, we cap those values before each one. Now make sure you pause and slow down the video if you need to. Essentially, it's the same logic as in the getter methods, which makes you think, can I use these getter methods? Can I use these getter methods? Not getter, sorry. These setter methods that I did earlier? Can I just say set red? Like this dot set red? I don't know. Maybe you could play around with that. Maybe you don't need this logic twice. Okay, a little challenge for you. Okay, moving on. Back to the original point of this. Let's make a pixel, okay? Right, let's take a look and let's see if this works, okay? So make sure everything's all saved up. And what I'd like to do first is, I wonder if I could see, see can you print? Can we print the value, the red value? Uh, I'll tell you the green value of this pixel. Hey, you might try this. You might say sys out, uh, print len my pixel dot green. And then you might say, hold on a minute, that's not gonna work. Because green is not visible because it's private. But don't we have some cool methods that are gonna work for us? If we say dot, look at it has all these things. Look, get look at it, it even has get green. Awesome. Okay, let's actually use the get green, the getter. This is an example of it. Now hopefully it doesn't say 300. Good lord, hopefully it doesn't say 300. I hope it says, it says 100, what? It says my green is 100, oh wait, R, G, oh that makes sense, perfect sense. Mr. Fleischman, what are you doing? I wanted to check this one, R, G, B. Okay, you guys have a good laugh at my expense, that's cool, I'm not there so it's not gonna hurt my feelings. I wanna get the blue, I wanna get blue and see if that whole capping thing worked, right? So hopefully the get blue returns 255. Okay, we're not insane, good. So if you set something to be too big, it's gonna go ahead and tame it down for you. All right, so what if I just wanted to print, okay, that's all working. Let's let's try to set, let's just practice. Can we set, set the blue to new? So the cool thing about this is we don't need to print it, right? We just say my pixel dot set blue to a new value, I'd like to set it to uh, 135, please. And then, oh, you know what? How about let's set the red, just for fun. Set red, I didn't make my set blue because I'm lazy, you guys did. Uh, set red, why don't we set the red to 135, all right? So up there, the red value is 20, but now if I say set red, and then I print the value, sys out, I would like to see the my pixels red value. My pixel dot red uh, get red. That's right. So I I better I ought to see 135 as my red value. Good. I see my blue earlier and I get my red. Good. Okay. So we're all good. What happens when I try to see my my pixel? Okay. What happens when I try to see my pixel? Actually, you know what we're gonna do first? How about this? Your turn. What you're gonna do? You're gonna make Make a Seahawk. Make a Seahawk. Try out your methods. Like above. Okay, so make a Seahawk using the Seahawk constructor. Print its values. Get its number. Change its number. Make sure that's all good to go. And you know what? For, for the time being right now, you know how like we had to protect the value of... We had to protect the value of... Uh, the pixel here. Um, I know we could easily do that for the number, right? The jersey number could be set to being too high. Let's just agree right now. Let's not take the time to do that for this, just for now, okay? Just to, just be friendly with it, right? So how about this? Set Make a Seahawk. Um, try out the methods like above. Make sure they work, okay? So pause the video in three, and two, and one. Make some Seahawks go. Okay, so hopefully we're back. I'm just gonna do this real quick, okay? Seahawk. Um, uh, the Seahawk's gonna be called Mr. F. It's gonna be a new Seahawk. Seahawk. And his name's going to be Brian. And the number, ooh, whoa, 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 not, oh my gosh, never happened to you guys? You hit like a dot and then it uses all these string methods. My number is gonna be 12 because I was 12 in high school, number 12, flying around at free safety, making big plays. Okay, so let's see here. Can I can I print sys out? 
I'd like to print um, Mr. F dot get name. Okay, now hopefully it says Brian. It does. Okay. Can I set my name to something else? Oh my gosh. Can I set my name? Um, let's see. Let's do this real quick. You guys probably already. You can probably fast forward this if you if you don't like this. So set set name to um, Dom because I'm a dominator. System up. Oh wait, I don't need to print it. Come on, dude. You don't when you see setters, you don't print them, right? Because there's nothing to print. It's void, right? Uh, so Mr. F set name Dom, and then I want to see my name. How about that? So first this should say Brian, and then I change my name to Dom. Okay, everything's working as expected. Now what if I just want to print, I'm going back to my pixel, back to my pixel, back to pixel. What if I just want to print, just print the pixel? What happens when I do that? So sys out, check this out. Can you guys code this with me? I want to print my pixel. This will probably be our last thing we have time for. Oh, okay, so, all oh, right, so it, it has some kind of address attached to it with the class name, right? So there's a way, it's kind of different than the arrays, but it's kind of similar, right? It has a little bit more information about what this thing is, but it still appears to be pretty nonsensical. Now, um, hmm. so what we can do here is we can customize this. You know, when you print my pixel, what's going on is a method is being run, right? A method is being run and it's returning this value. Okay, so here's let's take some notes right here. Okay, I'm, I'm going to move this down. So when we do this, there's a method being run. The method's name, the method. How about this? The method returns a string to print. So here's what's going on. Now, did we write this method? So I'm going to go into my pixel class. Is there any method that we returned a string with? Well, oops, this, this, I mean, we have like some getters for like the green, red, green, and blue, but nothing that returns a string, right? So this actually, this method, we did not write. It was written by somebody else who wrote Java, right? Who says, okay, if there's like an object that somebody made, and they need to print it, I'm gonna go ahead and tell them to print like the name of the class. You can imagine what they were thinking, right? So go ahead and print the name of the class and then you know some kind of code after it, right? Let's say we don't like that. Let's say we want something more informative. We can actually override that, that method, okay? So here's what we're gonna do, okay? We actually gonna write this method. This method has a special name. You know what, we need to take one more note before we go over to Pixel. Okay, this method's name, this method's name is to string, right? We kind of actually saw that in arrays.toString, didn't we? So this, this method name to string shouldn't be totally unfamiliar, but we can make our own method for my pixel and call it to, to string. We want it to override what somebody else coded for us, right? So here's what we're going to do. Okay, so in here in our pixel class, code this with me. Okay, way, I don't know, my, my brackets are a little sloppy. Hopefully you guys have better grip on it than me. So here's my to string method. And I'm gonna say this just for fun. Did I say that? Or is, it, is it a, oh no. Okay, forget about this part. Let's just say this, public string to string. All right, so here's what we want to do. We don't want to print anything. What we want to do is return a string that's formatted just perfectly. We want that we want it that contains the information about the pixel that we want. Okay? So this to string is going to do this, okay? Let's format a string. Let's build up a string. I'm going to say string um, string out or whatever. And I'm going to go ahead and go like this. It's going to start with it's going to say this.red it's the red, actually, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say red, and then I'm going to say this.red. Okay? And then I'm going to tack on a new line. You guys remember this escape sequence, backslash n? So it's going to, the output is going to be, so far it's going to be red, and then it's going to be this.red. 
okay? And it's gonna be whatever the red value is in this particular instance that I'm printing. Um, and then I wanna add on to the out string. And I wanna add on, and actually, you know what I'm gonna do just for formatting sake? I'm gonna say out plus equals, and I'm gonna do it kinda of over here so it kinda of looks similar, green. And then space, and then I'm gonna concatenate this green value, this dot green. And then I'm gonna concatenate on a new line character. And then finally, I'm going to do it one one last time for the blue, RGB. Plus this dot. Blue. And this last one, I guess I don't need a new line character. I'll do it. I'll do, I'll do a new line character. Well, no, I don't want a new line character. I changed my mind. Okay, no new line character. And finally, after I'm done building up the string, I'm gonna return out. And that's why the, oh gosh, I hit the dot again. This new keyboard, I'm telling you. You hit the dot, it's got all kinds of great ideas for you, doesn't it? Return out, and now it's happy. Now usually, I don't know, I haven't done this in like a little bit, but usually you can say, you can kind of let Java know that you wanna override. You know, here's the thing, maybe, no? Okay, there it is. So I usually do this because it lets, so I put a little at override. It's a little annotation that shows I'm overriding what that genius programmer did for us. You remember this one? This programmer who said uh, pixel at 67732. Um, that's a great idea. He wrote some to string method for us for this object uh, and all objects actually. Uh, I want to, I got my own idea. I'm going to override your idea. And the, here's the thing. I have to call it to string, it's magic words, you have to call it to string or else the println method won't work on it, okay? So if you call it public string to string and then build it up and then make sure you save, make sure you save all over the place. Okay, and now let's see if now I print my pixel, I should get something more informative. Look at that, isn't that sweet? That is awesome, okay, red greed. <laughs> you guys probably caught this way before me. Uh, and you guys have probably already fixed it. It's not red, green, and blue. It's red, green, and blue. Oh, man. Red, green, and blue. There we go. So now this pixel we can kind of see is like this, right? And you can even format it in a way that you like a little bit more than that, right? You might want to say something else about it, like, you know, whatever information you want to know. So my last activity for you, for you guys today is why don't we do this? Can you guys build your own? Build your own. My goodness, this keyboard. Build your own to string override method for the Seahawk. What do you think about that? Can you do that? All right, so let's do that before you go. Um, and I'm gonna let Sylvain check to see if you guys got it right. And um, after that, I think you guys will have plenty to chew on for today. Um, and if you want to get creative and, and make some more classes that implement some of these new ideas, please do. I think that's a lot. Let's talk about our new stuff before we go, okay? Um, we're going to, don't pause the video just yet. It's going to end here in a second. Uh, let's just talk about what we learned, okay? So first we practiced some good class design. We, we worked on um, making our Seahawk that had some prop, private properties and private fields and some getters and setters, right? And look at what else we learned about. We learned about this dot notation, and hopefully that was uh, that kind of made sense. That explanation. Remember this dot. It means this instance. Without this dot, it could mean something as immediate as a parameter, but it also could mean if there, like, remember you just don't use this dot. If it doesn't have an immediate parameter like this, then it thinks you must be talking about this instance, right? So just make sure you understand this dot name gets name means this instance that I'm making right now gets the name that you passed in as a parameter, okay? That's another new idea. And the second new idea we learned about is the to string method, okay? So here it is, right? It has to be called to string with this exact same capitalization, camel case. If you do this, you can kind of see that when you use println now, right? When you use a print or a println and you pass this new object, this pixel object into it, the first thing that println is going to do is gonna find your to string method that you made. It'll use that. If it can't find one, it'll use the one that the dude before us made for us, which prints like codes and stuff like that, okay? 
So th- hopefully those two ideas are enough for you today and you felt like you learned something. I really appreciate you guys uh, working with me and um, and having fun with this this new stuff with objects. And next class period, here's what you guys can expect, okay? We're going to make a picture class that contains pixels as properties. It's going to have a property called pixels and it's going to be an array of pixels. And we're going to make a team that's going to have an array of Seahawks, okay? Mind blown yet? Okay, I hope so because we're getting into some big boy and big girl kind of stuff here, okay? So let's do it, all right? Have a great one, and I'm sure I'll see you Friday. My kid will be better, and uh, happy coding, everybody. I'll see you soon. Have a great day. Talk to you guys later.